Good morning, and welcome to Leroy United Methodist Church. Thank you for worshiping with us on this second Sunday of Advent. Today we will be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion, so we invite you to prepare your bread and juice at home so that you can partake in the sacrament at the end of the service. We will also have drive through communion at our north entrance of the church today from 10, and, I'm sorry, from 11 o'clock till 11.30, from 11 till 11.30. Uh, so please come for drive through communion and prayer with the pastor. Also tonight at six o'clock, we will fill the night with music and light. We will ring the old church bell at six and then our carillon will play some Christmas carols. We encourage you to put your luminaries on your porches and each week during Advent, we will be adding more and more light to the front of the church to symbolize Jesus Christ, the light coming into the world. We have our fellowship time today via Zoom at 1015. And we'd also like to say special thanks to all who are participating in our worship service this morning. Kim Love is our lay reader. We have Nancy Schley on the organ, Matt Tizzi on piano, and Rick Hawk on tech. I invite you to prepare your hearts for worship as Kim comes forward to lead us in the call to worship. Can you hear it? A voice cries out. We gotta, we gotta get, get things, things together. together. Jesus, Jesus is coming. coming. Jesus is coming for those who are broken and have been beat up by life. He's, He's coming for those whose weak couldn't get any better and for those whose week was long and draining. He's, He's coming for those who embrace their next steps and for those who have no idea what's next. He's coming for those who live right and those just struggling to live. He's coming for those who anticipate a bright tomorrow and for those who are already over today. Come, come sweet Jesus, come. We're here waiting for you. And while we wait, we will worship. Please join us in singing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Thank you. 
The Old Testament lesson today comes from Isaiah 40, 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low, and uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get up to the high mountains, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judea, here is your God. See the Lord God come with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This ends the Old Testament lesson. Our lists are long, even in this strange mess where we live these days, and we want to, want to do it right. We want to be safe, but we want to be able to enjoy the season. We've got work to do to put right what has gone wrong, to heal what is broken, to mend the relationships, and to prepare for Jesus' coming. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that there is work to be done. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. When God comes in, then healing is to be found. But we need to make the way. We need to open the door into our lives. So we light these candles as a sign of our faith that the God we worship is not far from us and that we can clear the way for God to come and dwell with us. We light these candles in faith knowing that love is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel. and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. 
I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Here ends the lesson. Please pray with me. Oh God, we thank you for those who have prepared the way. Prepared the way for Jesus. Prepared the way for us to know Jesus. We thank you for the witness of John the Baptist. And we ask that you fill our hearts and our mouths with your words that we might proclaim that Jesus is coming. And now, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, a story is told about President Franklin Roosevelt, who often endured long receiving lines at the White House. And he complained one time that no one was really paying any attention to what was said. And so one day, during a reception, he decided to try an experiment. To each person who came down the line and shook his hand, he muttered, I murdered my grandmother this morning. I murdered my grandmother this morning. And the guests replied with phrases like, oh, marvelous, keep up the good work. We're so proud of you. God bless you, sir. <laughs> and it wasn't until the end of the line, while he was greeting the ambassador from Bolivia, that his words were actually heard. <laughs> and not knowing really what he should say, the ambassador leaned over and whispered, I'm sure she had it coming. <laughs> Have you ever felt like no one was listening? <laughs> that your voice isn't being heard? <laughs> Parents surely feel this way when they tell their children, go clean your room. <laughs> Talked about that last week. <laughs> and they return later to find the place still in complete upheaval. We all like to know that we are being heard. We desire a two-way communication, which means, of course, that we must learn to listen as well as to speak. And maybe we should listen more than we speak. You've heard the old saying, God gave us two ears and one mouth so that we should listen twice as often as we speak. Now, this season of Advent really isn't about communication, but when I read our scripture lessons, the prescribed lectionary texts for this week, I couldn't help but think about that theme of communication underneath it all. That the proclamation is in part about hearing and being heard. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John, John the Baptist, as we know him, appears every Advent to remind us that we haven't been paying enough attention. He shouts to wake us up. He dresses oddly, really oddly, to capture our fascination. He storms up and down the riverbank, asking us to take the plunge. He doesn't seem to be here to listen. He's here to talk, to announce, to shout. <laughs> a one-way communication, you might think. Except, except that John is asking for something from us. He's asking us to join the road crew, if you will. We've got streets to level. We've got curves to straighten. And when we think of this in personal terms, our own individual lives, we think about maybe cleaning up our hearts and our minds, straightening out our behavior patterns. Or maybe we think about it in communal terms, like looking at the justice of our systems that have, have bent in certain ways that keep certain people out. Either way, and, and both ways, really, there's work to be done. And a response is needed. 
John wants us to be participants in our own salvation. And the one who is coming, he's not there to overwhelm us. He, he doesn't transform us against our will. We're partners or we're contributors in the conversation of hope and of transformation. Now, some might argue that it's all about marching to the tune of the one who's in charge, right? It's, it's not really about conversation. It's about obedience. It's about following orders. Get to work. Clean this up. Take care of this. Do this. Don't do that. And so on and so forth. It's hardly a two-way street, some might say. The Lord's highway. This is the Lord's highway that we're straightening. And, and we all know that it's the Lord's way or the highway, right? <laughs> but not, not according to Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. We have to look back at the prophet Isaiah, and then we get the whole picture. The conversation didn't really begin with Jesus or even with John. The conversation began long before that. And Jesus was a response. Jesus was a response. Listen to this. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. God heard the cry and now God comes with a response. God has listened, and now God speaks. And the word that God speaks is Jesus. Now, that wasn't the first word or the word that the first hearers and Isaiah's words heard. What they heard was home. They heard home. The people of God were in exile at the time. They were cut off from the land that they loved the land that God had promised them, the land where God took up residence. And they felt all alone. They felt cast aside in this unfeeling and uncaring world. And they cried out to God. They confessed that they had forgotten to live as God's people, and now they were paying the price. Their society had begun to cater to power, and it began to cater to influence, began to cater to wealth, and many people suffered because of it. They forgot to look after and look for all of the people who were out on the margins, and now all of them were on the margins. Those systems in which they had placed all of their trust were no longer strong enough to support the life that they took for granted. So they cried out. And God heard. And God will bring them home. Not necessarily to the home that they envisioned, but the home that God envisions. That community that God calls us to create. The relationships that fulfill us and connect us this is the home that we seek, all of us. And that is the home where we find Jesus. Jesus, the, the child in the manger and the Savior on the cross speaks home to us. Home is where we are loved and heard and healed. Home is a place where we both listen and speak. Home is a place of dialogue. <laughs> we listen and we respond. And the Lord's kingdom is our home. And in this kingdom, we both listen and we respond. It's a two-way street. Our call is to listen and to respond. To announce and to proclaim. To make a way. Get up to your high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Lift it up and do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here, here is your God. Jesus is coming. 
Jesus is coming. And so we need to make ready. We need to make ourselves ready. We need to make our world ready. We need to make ready for the one who comes to lead us home. And the joy is that we get to be part of the cleanup crew. Now this isn't some menial task, it's, it's a big task. It's the glory of the Lord. Jesus, the light of the world, is coming. <laughs> Jesus, the gift of love, the gift of love, is coming. So let's get to work, my friends. Let's get to work. Amen. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I invite you to share with us your joys and concerns in the comments so that we might be praying with you and for you. We have been praying in our community here for all who've been affected by COVID. We've had people within our church family and extended church family who have, been, have tested positive. Um, and so today we pray for some new folks in our, in our midst who have tested positive. Uh, Mary Steffen, uh, as well as Nancy Schley's brother-in-law, um, Charlie, we also want to be in prayer for them and all who have been affected by it. We also need to continue to pray for each other, for our community. Our county is now purple. We need to offer grace and love to each other as we follow health department guidelines. So pray for one another. Let us take a few moments for some silent prayer as we center ourselves in God's presence, and then we'll have the pastoral prayer and the Lord's prayer. O oh God of Advent, God of coming, God of this season of anticipation, God who sent his son Jesus Christ into the world to comfort us and to be our hope. We come today, O oh God, expecting expecting you to be at work in and through us. We come expecting to feel your presence and to feel your hope and to feel your love. We come expecting, knowing that Jesus is coming. We thank you, O oh God, for sending your son Jesus into the world, the light the light that shines in the darkness. Oh God, fill us with your light and with your hope. Help us to be bearers of your good news that we would proclaim on the mountaintops and proclaim perhaps in our Zoom meetings that you are God and you are our hope. Today, oh God, we are mindful of our friends and loved ones, our people in our faith community who are ill, who are dealing with this virus that just seems so out of control. We know, oh God, that you came into a world that was feeling out of control 2,000 years ago, and you come to us again in that same vein. Help us to Put our hope and our trust in you in the midst of us. Help us to feel your presence. Help us to feel your healing. Bring healing to all who are sick. Bring comfort to all who are grieving. Grieving the loss of loved ones, grieving the loss of life as it once was in this season where we have so many traditions and hopes and expectations. Help us to remember the real reason is you and your son, Jesus Christ. And so today, oh God, that's what we pray about. We lift these things to you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We appreciate your continued support of the ministries of this church uh, throughout this pandemic. Uh, today we have placed in the offering plate our offerings. They represent all of those that have been received online, those that have been received in the mail. And we will pray over them, grateful for the blessings that God has given us. So I invite Kim to come and lead us in the offertory prayer. Almighty God, as John the Baptist identified the arrival of the Messiah, this Advent season, that role falls on us. As we bring our tithes and offerings to you, we pray that our giving continues to point to the Christ who comes in love and compassion, with more concern for those who don't have enough than for those who have plenty. May our giving in this season reflect our hope for a new kind of kingdom to reign in our world. We pray this in the name of the Messiah, Jesus our Savior. Amen. As we come to our time of Holy Communion, I again invite you to gather your bread and juice around you. We have bread and cup on the altar, as well as a basket of those elements that will be distributed during our drive through communion from 11 to 11.30 today. And so we will be blessing those elements that you have at home, as well as those elements here. Today we come to Christ's table of grace. Though we're physically separated from each other, we're still bound together as a family by our baptism. As members of the household of God, we now join together virtually, yet still present to one another as we gather from across the miles. This presence is marked by our shared praises and our prayers, our shared hearing and affirming of God's word, and now our shared eating. The peace and presence of the Lord is with us, and so we lift up our hearts. We give thanks to the Lord our God because it's the right thing to do, not only now, but always, day after day after day. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, our love failing and our bodies diseased, you reached out to us again and again, providing healing, wholeness, and new life. When the flood came, you provided an ark. When the plagues came, you provided safety. When evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When exile came, you provided a new song. Day after day after day, your love remained steadfast. And so with your people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is your son who came to preach good news to the poor, release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to fee, free the oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread he gave thanks to you and broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for all people 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often to remember me. Let us be a community of healers and hope givers, proclaiming the mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all who have gathered around your table and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, made whole by his witness, passion, and life. In this season of social distancing, may you remind us that we are never spiritually distant from you. We belong to your body. May the Spirit use us to heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. And now, Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we all feast together at your heavenly banquet. May all honor and glory be yours, almighty God now and forever. Amen. The holy child of Bethlehem descends to us and is born in us these days. Let us share the bread. We hear the Christmas angels, their great glad tidings tell. Let us drink deeply. Christ abides with us. Amen. I invite you to prayerfully partake in Holy Communion by whatever means you have. Let us pray. Day after day, O oh God, you give yourself to us. In two or three gathered in your name, in connection across the miles, and in bread and wine. As we go from this gathering around your table, may we feel restored to your body, companioned by your people, and sustained by the power of your spirit, as we witness to your healing and reconciling work. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. <laughs>
here for Jesus. Your Jesus, my Jesus, our Jesus. So go and make your voice heard. Shout it out in your phone calls to your friends and your family. Shout it out in your Zoom meetings. Shout it from your living rooms. Shout it from your heart. Tell somebody, anybody, everybody, that Jesus is coming. He's coming to make us better and he's coming to make us whole. So go, knowing that we've got work to do. And do it all in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.